It's the end of the first week in the FRC rebuild season, and lots of community members come up with some really creative mechanisms for solving a bunch of different game problems this year. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the best ones that I found and how you might apply these to your own robot. Not only does it allow it to come down to be able to pick up fuel, but it also means I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. And a long time ago in the competitive robotics scene, an old mentor told me to steal from the best and invent the rest. And it is great to be able to take a look at what the community has come up with and uh, use it as jumping off points for designing your own robots. So today we're going to take a look at a couple different robot reveals, some different intake designs the teams have come up with, different ways of achieving those uh, level one and level two and level three tower hangs, as well as some different outtakes and some different methods you might want to try for your prototype process. So first up here, we've got Swift and ITCAN uh, in their robot in three days reveal. They've got a hooded shooter, which you may remember from the 2017 season was one, as that was a, a pretty common shooter design uh, in this case. Also, you've seen a lot of hooded shooters coming out of the uh, FTC decode season as well, because that's also something that's popular. Uh, something I like they're doing on the side of their design here is that they have a intake that's capable of, I'm not sure how far this is, but it does, it is on some linear rails, so it's able to reach out beyond their robot as well as kick it back in. And this serves a little bit of dual purpose. And one, it makes the hopper a little bit larger so they can store more fuel objects, but it also allows them to reach outside, grab it in. And when their hopper gets a little bit too full, what they could do is it allows them to move that intake back in towards their robot so that they can jostle some of these fuel pieces in a little bit more. That works quite well. We can see they've got a little secondary section of, it looks like probably a four inch wheel. That's kicking it up, starting to accelerate that ball before it gets into the main flywheel mechanism itself. Next up, we've got a robot reveal from Big Sky Robotics. And I want to show off this robot mostly for its intake section. They've got some mechanum wheels driving around here. Uh, and it's got a small little roller bar on the bottom with this intake, as well as some larger wheels at the back as well. Another kind of hooded shooter and a little a belt index that comes on the side. So we can see that as far as this intake goes, let's go back to where we can get a better view on that one here. They've got a couple belts running in a vertical path, and then they also have a little bar here that's, my guess is this is just a free spinning bar for it to be able to kick itself back up because it doesn't look like there's any powered movement coming in on this as well. So let's jump forward a little more so we can see how it's able to actually do its intake performance. And it's able to, of course, shoot and intake at the same time. Pretty impressive work. Uh, it's a great video to take a look at for how you might get a few more ideas in some sort of vertical intake here on this robot. Next up, we've got Monkey from the Fang G robot and the first alumni networks in Grand Valley reveal here. They've got a similar looking intake in that they have a flat roller bar at the front and a slightly flexible sheet of plastic in the back that's able to bump itself back up. And another set of compliant wheels that are able to bring itself back up in. Pretty effective little intake, obviously made a little bit wider. Things work, perhaps be able to pick up a little bit more in those. But again, these aren't meant to be a, you take this, you run with it. It's supposed to be, here's a jump storm, um, you know, brainstorm jumping off point. As far as the shooter goes, they've got a curved section of uh, polycarbonate. I believe they have eight degrees on this to be able to shoot up quite high. They have one roller that serves to initially speed up their flywheel and then they have the main flywheel section itself all the way up. And it's got a pretty accurate shot when it's about pretty darn close to where the hub would end up being. Nice thing about this design is that rather than only allowing one fuel to come through at a time, it's wide enough that you could realistically have two pieces of fuel stacked in side by side. So it ends up getting a little bit higher throughput than a design that might only allow for a single piece of fuel coming through at a time. Making that flywheel a little bit wider with some more inertia on that uh, flywheel itself might also help improve some of these things. Next up here, we've got a robot reveal from Shubuk Rapid US. And I want to show off their intake as well as some of their rapid prototyping methods, because I really quite like that they've got what looks to me like a sheet of bubble wrap hanging out of the front of their robots. They've got a couple of little quick arms here on some linear rails to be able to lift themselves up. Not sure whether that is powered, but it's capable of lifting itself up to level one and then bringing itself back down to level one, especially on autonomous when you want to pick yourself up and then you have to bring yourself back down to, of course, be able to compete. Uh, this is what I was talking about here. You got a sheet of bubble wrap that stops these fuels from flying up really far. 
Looks like their intake is also capable of rotating up and down on uh, some sort of a revolute or pivot joint up here as well. Uh, but this is a good way of sort of very lo-fi way of stopping those uh, fuel from being launched too far from something that might be too aggressive of an intake. Also, as well as they do a quick pause here, let's see if I can unpause it when they stop it. They do have some boot kickers as well here for their intake as opposed to compliant wheels that other teams have done. And their boot kickers seem to be pretty effective and be able to pick up fuel as it comes into the robot as well. So it looks like boot kickers is also a pretty legitimate strategy moving into this season. Uh, switching gears a little bit here, I want to talk about prototyping methods that your team can use moving in. And the, I really want to highlight first in their MIT section here, and that when they're doing the rapid prototype and the rapid ideation for the design cycle, they're using lots of cardboard here just to be able to test their ideas. Far too often in robotics, I see students uh, come up with one idea right away and then just trying to cat it out or trying to design these things in sort of high fidelity parts. You really want to start your design process in a low fidelity process. Things like cardboard to see, do these things fit? Do these concepts work? I mean, you can see they've literally just got a drill here with a long shaft that they've uh, put a few different uh, compliant wheels on just to check whether their, uh, their initial ideas are even going to hold any water or not. And it's a great way of prototyping a lot faster. Despite feeling like it's going a little bit slower, it actually ends up speeding you up in the end. Next up, I want to highlight a few uh, tests that some of these teams are doing. Dankbots has a really excellent test that they've done here, as well as some reasonings for taking a swerve drive up and over, and that some swerve drives from previous seasons may end up bottoming out. We've also got a similar idea here with critical circuits, and that they also were bottoming out on the top of their swerve modules. Some things team might want to try to do is try to have some smooth polycarbonate or acetyl flat plates down on the bottom. I've also seen teams moving up diagonally. One question I have with moving diagonally is how uh, reliably can you make sure that you're moving up and over that ramp diagonally as well? You've also got, uh, I believe it was cranberry alert and is very much just send it and just launch yourself way over, but you might run into the problem where you start to run on top of some of these fuel pieces as well, if you're going to send it a little bit too hard into your section. So keep that in mind, uh, having some sort of slick belly plate may be advisable this season. Next up, let's talk a little bit more about intakes here. This is the robot in three days from Famine. And I want to highlight here just they have a little bit of compliance in there. So now, obviously, it's not a very rigid system at the moment, but take a look at these sort of rubber bands or surgical tubing that comes in. So as this is driving in, this bottom part is fixed, but the top part is able to actually lift itself up. And the reason they're doing that is it gives a little bit of extra compliance on that fuel. So it allows the ball to actually pick itself up, move it in, and you don't have to worry about calculating exact angles for how much compression you need on that fuel to build, bring it in. The rubber band allows it to kind of adapt for how much compression it needs at that point in time, be there are too many fuels coming in, three, four, five fuels coming into your intake. Having a little bit of extra compliance really helps you out on that. I also have a full tutorial on designing your own compliant intakes in that respect. Moving on to some indexing for teams that may be using a single shooter. Uh, we've got a rotary indexer here for how you might go about feeding these things into your index. I like showing this and I want to show this just because they're using, again, just using some simple cardboard, using a drill uh, and just testing how these things are moving along and whether their concepts are working as a prototype or not. It's excellent thing. Nice job on this one, Red Raider. And Red Raider actually comes up again here. So I really like the prototyping process. I think it's a great channel to check out because uh, they have a whole bunch of testing here where they have taken different outtake wheels and they have uh, laid up different levels of compression, similar to a test that I did back with the uh, FTC season. And they're simply just lifting this section up and down and checking how does the trajectory of this ball change? How does my flywheel change its speed depending on how much compression uh, we end up using and they have i think five or six videos of different compressions in fractional i believe in decibel inches as well it's definitely worthwhile to go take a look at if you're wondering just how much compression you might want to be using for a shooter mechanism if you happen to be using a shooter mechanism uh, that is a flywheel this season i also want to take a look at another outtake here for teams that this looks like this is eventually going to be a hooded shooter and that they have a or an adjustable hood shoe they've got a gear on the back here that would allow them to be able to change the angle of that hood so they can have different trajectories 
Another thing on their flywheel is they've got a big chunk of steel on the back of that. And having that big chunk of steel on a flywheel allows that flywheel to keep itself having a little bit more inertia so you can have a higher throughput through. And especially in this season, having a high throughput is going to be really important to the success of your robot. Case in point, I want to show this robot here for higher throughput. It is FRC 868 uh, Tech Hounds, and this is their robot Rust Hounds uh, for the robot in three days. So they've got a rather wide intake, similar to a robot we are, sorry, not intake, outtake, that we saw similar to the other section four, and that they're capable of firing a couple balls in here. I also like that their intake is capable of moving up and down. Not only does it allow it to come down, to be able to pick up fuel, but it also means that they can move fuel back closer to their eventual outtake mechanism. And it ends up with a really high throughput. Having high throughput this season is going to be really critical, I think, for where teams are going, particularly if you have some really high ranking point thresholds, like that supercharged threshold that requires 360 uh, to be able to get that ranking point in. And not only that, but it's also the only the district champs which means when it comes time for your regional championships and your worlds first is likely going to increase those values as well so they'll only continue to get higher than 360 uh, in that respect and last up here we've got a, a really creative level three lift from this robot they actually don't have to get any higher than level one but they've got a ratcheting cam here that's able to lock itself onto this piece of plywood, lift the entire robot up and over, and rules as written state that you only need to have the bumpers above the second rung to be able to score a level three hang. So looking at this would actually allow you to have a level three hang for a pretty simple mechanism. It's simple and clever, uh, and it perhaps is one of those things where it's simple, but it is not easy. If you have a robot or a piece of tech or an assembly that you think the community would benefit for, I've got a submission form down below where you can submit either your robot, your team's prototyping skills, and the videos that you've done, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever have you. You can fill out that form and potentially be featured. If you want to access some more CAD files, things like that, you consider joining my community down below. And as always, best of luck out there this rebuild season.